Well, good morning, everyone. This is August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. And we want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Tuesday morning, coming to you live from Lincoln, Rhode Island. We are back home at our ministry headquarters, and we want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on this Tuesday morning. Well, it's October. It's October the 10th. And today in New England, it's going to be 80 degrees. Can you imagine that? 80 degrees for October, October the 10th. And so, hey, listen, we'll take it because I love the warm weather, especially when we're going late into the fall months. You know, let it be warm all year long, even right through the winter. I will take it. Well, we just got back yesterday from Howland, Maine, and this past Friday and Saturday and Sunday, I preached a three-day Bible prophecy conference at Howland Baptist Church for Pastor Dale Chastity and his people. And we had such a wonderful, wonderful time. And I am glad to report to all of you that three people made professions of faith. A young boy uh, and two young women came to know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. So we rejoice over that. And uh, we are so grateful for that opportunity that we can use the study of Bible prophecy as an evangelistic tool to win people to the Lord. That's what I want to do. I just don't want to use prophecy for the sake of throwing all this information out there for you and that's it. Don't forget to give us a love offering down the road. I want to use prophecy to win people to the Lord. And I want to keep doing that until we can't do it no more. And so it was a real blessing to take the opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one with these individuals, open the Bible, and share within the plan of salvation, and they got saved. And so there's room for more, and that's what we want to do. Plant the seed of the gospel in the last days in which we live. We stayed at the beautiful bed and breakfast called the Cold Spring Inn. Cold Springs Inn in Enfield, Maine. It was about maybe 10 minutes away from the church. And the people who run that place, uh, Jack and his wife Kate, godly born-again believers. They don't advertise. They only do word of mouth because they don't want any riffraff going into their place. And we had a wonderful, wonderful time with them. They made us dinner, they made us breakfast, and the place is beautiful, it's historical, right on a beautiful lake there in Enfield, Maine. So they invited us to come back anytime that we wanted, they said. And so it was just a real joy uh, to be there, and uh, it was a joy to preach. On Bible prophecy this past Friday I preached on the, the wickedness of the heart of man in the last days the Las Vegas massacre Saturday uh, night I preached on heaven 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 and Bible prophecy heaven the home of the redeemed and then of course for uh, Sunday school I taught on the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? I taught this during our live feed some time ago. And then I preached on, for the morning service, the ruler of the revived Roman Empire. And then for Sunday night, I preached on why the September 23rd prophecy, so-called, failed. And so if you want to watch any of the services that I preached this past Friday, Saturday, and Sunday 
at Holland Baptist Church for their prophecy conference. You can either scroll down on my Facebook profile page to the videos, or you can go to the Holland Baptist Church Facebook page. Holland, H-O-W-L-A-N-D. Holland Baptist Church Facebook page. And you can watch all three of the services. Um, Janice Waterberger, our dear friend from the left coast of California, says, pray for North, Carol uh, North California. Hundreds of homes lost several dead from wildfires. If you know California, California has been up in flames for a long time long time and it seems like it's only getting worse now they deal with earthquakes they deal with uh, massive wildfires out there so please pray for the people of california and what we're going to be uh doing today is i want to talk about the priestly ironic benediction and what is this all about and what does this have to do with bible prophecy what is the priestly ironic benediction well it is scripture it's in the bible we call it the priestly ironic benediction the priestly prayer of aaron so we're going to talk. We're going to talk about this today. And so before we do that, I want to give you an opportunity to visit my website at todayinbibleprophecy.org. Sign up for our newsletters. While you are there, navigate around our website and answer our prophecy poll participation question. And if you want more information about our upcoming Bible Prophecy Tour to Israel in March of 2018, we already got people interested in wanting to go. We want to take uh, between 15 and 20 people. If you would like to come with us, then you would have an opportunity to do so by making preparations right now. So if you'd like to come to Israel with us, you can get a hold of me through Facebook Messenger or uh, through my email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com or through my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. We still have the tour from last March up on the website. Click it on, look at the itinerary of what we saw this past March. It's pretty much going to be the same for next year so we would love to have you join us in israel in march of 2018 lord willing unless the lord tarries march is going to come on us very very uh fast so we would love to have you join us in the land of israel now, I know that I always acknowledge everybody before uh, I get with the uh, broadcast, but I'm going to do that after. I'm going to acknowledge all of you by name. Those of you that are watching live now, I'll acknowledge, acknowledge all of you by name after the broadcast. Not before, but after the broadcast. But let me just, again, thank all of you. But taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. I know I see a lot of my friends that are in the room, people that um, that are my Facebook friends that I don't really know personally. Uh, we appreciate all of you uh, taking time out of your schedule to join us. And listen, if, if we've been a blessing to you, if our ministry's been a blessing to you, you enjoy our Bible prophecy teaching, for its plain sense interpretation, 
no hype, no drama, no, sen no, no sensationalism. As you get from those other guys on YouTube. You're just getting the plain sense teaching and preaching of Bible prophecy, of the Word of God. If we've been a blessing to you, prayerfully consider helping to support our ministry. Others do it at $20 a month, others periodically or a one time gift. And you can do that by going to my website. Today in BibleProphecy.org, scrolling down to the bottom of the page, and the PayPal button right there, you can hit the PayPal button and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. You can also mail your support to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. Patty and I will be leaving for Israel. On October the 22nd, a little less than three weeks from now, we're going there to evangelize, and we're going there to share the gospel with the Jewish people. Zola Levitt Ministries is sending us over there, and uh, even though they have a tour going over there, we're breaking away from the tour. And we're going to minister, we're going to evangelize, we're going to put a Hebrew Bible, Old and New Testament, in the hands of an Israeli, and even Arabs for that matter, to share with them the good news of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. We do have car rental expense and gas expense over there. Our hotels, food, everything else is taken care of. We just need help financially with the car rental expense, and gas expense, because we're not going to be going on the tour bus with the tour group. They're going to be doing their thing. We're going to be doing our thing. So if you can help us out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. You, by your financial support, are having a hand, as if you were over there with us, putting a Bible into the hands of a Jewish person. Your support helps us to do Exactly that. So we're going to be going there October the 22nd. Not only to go soul winning, but I will also be shooting some video out there on Bible prophecy at certain <clears throat> excuse me certain locations. <clears throat> so uh, we need your help with that. Please pray about helping us. Whether you if, if, if they said five dollars or fifty dollars or hundred, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. No gift is too big, and no gift is too small. So if you can help us out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, follow me on the social networks. Obviously, here on Facebook, my page is profile. These videos are, are public. My, my page is public. My profile is public. These live streaming videos are public. Anybody can watch whether they're a friend of mine or not on Facebook. So uh, tell a friend that we're on Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so uh, we come to you every day with a leading news story of the week, and then I give a prophetic perspective on that news story. So follow me on the social networks, of course, here on Facebook. Look at all of my late-breaking news articles that I post on my Twitter page. You can follow me on Twitter, August Rosado, at Bible underscore prophecy, right there on Twitter. Every day I post late-breaking news stories out of Israel, the Middle East, and around the world. So please follow me on Twitter. Now I see Pastor Amsbar is here in the room. Pastor Ansbaugh is on Twitter. So Pastor Ansbaugh, send me a follow request so you can follow me on uh, on Twitter. But uh, great to see him here. And like I said, I'm going to acknowledge all of you at the end of the broadcast. And so uh, Twitter, and if you get into LinkedIn, I'm also on LinkedIn. Evangelist August Rosado, if you, if you get into LinkedIn. And so... We'll have more to say 
at the end of the broadcast. But now, I want to talk about the priestly Aaronic benediction. And I hope and pray that this is a blessing to you as much as it's a blessing to me. Especially when you've been to Israel 18 times like I have. Number 19 is coming up October 22nd. And uh, I love the Jewish roots of my faith. I believe I have physical Jewish roots. Uh, I have a, a great, great, great grandfather who was a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Hatikva Rosado, who was a rabbi in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, where my father was born where you have Sephardic Jews. Now, a Sephardic Jew is a Jew of Spanish descent, whether he's Cuban, Puerto Rican, uh, Spaniard, Mexican. Uh, Sephardic Jews are Jews of Spanish descent. When those Jews got evicted out of Spain in 1492, uh, a lot of those Jews fled to those very countries and established Jewish communities and synagogues. Rabbi Hatikva Rosado is a great, great, great grandfather of mine who had a congregation, a Jewish congregation, not Messianic, unfortunately, but a Jewish congregation there in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, where my father was born. And, of course, any Spanish person, whether he's full-blooded or half Spanish, like I am, half Puerto Rican, uh, any uh, Latino person with a vowel at the end of their name is descendant of Sephardic Jews. Well, my last name is Rosado, R-O-S-A-D-O. I had a man not too long ago who was an expert in Sephardic Judaism. I was even told this by my tour guide in Israel, Hillel Bar Sadeh. He said, your last name is Rosado. How do I say to you? I'm like, yeah. He goes, did you know that you're a, a, a Sephardic Jew? You're a Jew of Spanish descent. I said, I had an idea about that. I know there was a reason why I didn't like pork. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I don't like it because, you know, technically, physically doesn't agree with me. At all, but I love my shellfish. Okay, don't touch my shellfish. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, uh, I am a Sephardic Jew. I am a Jew of Spanish descent. And I remember these funny looking hands that I saw on my first trip to Israel. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what it is in a few minutes. And it's going to be pretty uh, familiar to you when I explain this to you. And one former Star trek uh, character who's deceased now, who would always make these hand gestures, and I'll show you what that is in a few moments. But I want you to take your Bibles, and I want you to go with me to Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter number six. Number six reports the priestly benediction. And in Numbers chapter 6 and verse number 24, it says this. Actually, let me, um, let me say it in Hebrew, and then I'll read it for you in English. Shalom. <laughs> The Lord, um, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace or give thee shalom. Now, that is the priestly benediction or the priestly benediction of the Aaronic priesthood or the priesthood. Of Aaron. Numbers chapter 6 records 
the priestly benediction of Aaron. It is a prayer of Aaron upon the Jewish people for blessings, God's blessings, and God's protection of Israel. It is a benediction to remind Israel that God will always be with them. That God will always be with the Jewish people. Now, three aspects stand among this priestly blessing. Number one, God desires to bless his people. The Lord bless thee. His chosen people. The apple of his eye, a people that he chose to separate from among all the other peoples of the world. Well, that's Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. God gives grace to his people. The Lord be gracious unto thee. God gives grace to the people of Israel. God always worked through grace. Way before the law even came on the scene, God worked through faith, and God always bestowed his grace. Way before the law, the Mosaic law, came on the scene. Remember with Noah? Noah chapter 6, verse 8. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Abraham believed God, that's faith, and it was accounted, credited to his account for righteousness. Abraham trusted God by faith. God always worked through faith, emunah, as they say in Hebrew, faith, and God always bestows his grace. What is grace? G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Unmerited favor, something you and I don't deserve, but freely given to us by God. And the third aspect of the priestly benediction is that God gives peace. He gives shalom to his people. You see, in Israel, if you say uh, one shalom, it's hello. Two shaloms, it's goodbye. So if we were walking in Israel and I saw you, I would say, Shalom. You would say, Shalom back. And then after our conversation, I would say, Shalom, Shalom. And then you would say, Shalom, Shalom. Goodbye. It, it means a few things. Peace, hello, goodbye. So God bestows blessings upon Israel, graciousness or grace upon Israel, and his peace, Shalom, on Israel. The book of Numbers is a part of the Torah, T-O-R-A-H, that's Hebrew, is a part of the Torah or the first five books of Moses. What are these five books? Well, we know the first one to be in Hebrew, Bereshit. That is the book of Genesis. Bereshit simply means beginning. Genesis 1-1. Bereshit, bara Elohim, Hashemayim, Aretz. In the beginning, that's Genesis, in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. So we have Bereshit, we have Genesis, and then we have Shemot, Safer Shemot, the book of Exodus. And then we have Safer Vaikra, the book of Leviticus. And then we have Safer Bar Midbar, that is the book of Numbers, and then we have Safir Devarim. We have the book of Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. All make up what is, what the Jewish people, the rabbis call, the Torah. So we say in Hebrew, Torah, which pretty much simply means uh, teaching. And we, call, we also call these first four books in the church the Pentateuch which comes from two Greek words, penta, uh, which could mean tool, uh, vessel, uh, book, if they will, and um, tekuim, which means to make. So we have pentatuk, two Greek words. 
a, a book to make to teach. That's pretty much what it means. The five books or the five shows written by Moshe Rebbeinu, which is Hebrew for Moses, our teacher. This uh, is a part, Deuteronomy 6, a part of the Torah portion that they call the Naso, which uh, means to lift up. Now, according to the Jewish Talmud, this is not scripture, it's just a rabbinic commentary. According to the Talmud, Aaron and his sons were the only ones who were authorized to pray the Aaronic benediction priestly blessing in number 6 24 through 26 it would be said that after the daily offerings in the temple and the lighting of the menorah the seven branch candelabra mentioned in exodus 25 after lighting the seven branch menorah then the the uh the kohen hagadol that would be the high priest the kohen hagadol a high priest would come out of the temple, and then what he would do is he would lift up his arms in the air, and then he would take his fingers and he would form a certain Hebrew letter. Now, about two years ago, I bought this in Israel. I was walking down. Uh, a street in Tel Aviv, and I was looking at the gift shops and all that, just strolling down the streets of Tel Aviv by myself in Israel. And I looked and I noticed this in the window, and I said, I got to have it. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the priestly benediction. I don't think, I don't know if you can uh, see it or not, but. Um, it's, you can see it right there in Hebrew. So that's what you see here, right on Hebrew. The high priest would lift his arms in the air after coming out of the temple. And then he would form his fingers. As you can see right here, he would form his fingers, pardon both of the fingers. And by doing this, by doing this, he is forming a 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It looks like a W. I probably should have got one of the Hebrew letters that I forgot to get. It looks like a fancy looking W. That is the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet known as the Shin, S-H-I-N, Shin, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zion, He, Te, Yov, Tav, Lamed, Ben, Nun, Samet, Ayin, Pe, Tzadi, Koth, Reish, Shin, 22, and Tav. That would be the 23rd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But Sheen, by forming his things like this, Sheen, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So what he would do as he would walk out of the temple, raise his arms in the air, form his fingers like this to form the Hebrew letter Sheen, and I'll tell you what that means in a moment, and then he would pray the Aaronic priestly benediction. Right there, number six, uh, 24 uh, through 26. Now, if you look at the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, they correspond to Psalm 119. Every eighth verse out of Psalm 119 corresponds to the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 
So you like, for example, if you have a mezuzah, I have, I have a mezuzah on my dua, on that mezuzah, and if you come to Israel with us, you notice on your hotel room, there's a mezuzah. And on that mezuzah has the 22nd letter of the Hebrew Aleph that, you know, we say alphabet, but it's alphabet, but it's Aleph that. Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, bait, the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew letter Sheen would represent Shaddai. Sheen has the SH sound, like sh. Sheen would correspond to Shaddai or El Shaddai. Almighty God, the high priest, and lifting up his arms, forming the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet with his fingers. And he would do that to fulfill the commandment of Leviticus chapter 6 and verse number 27 where it reads, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. I've always wondered when I look at the palms of my hands, and I look at the palm of my hands and I see this right here. Everybody who has this, I guess, you know, men and women, would have this on the palm of their hand. Look at these lines on the palm of my hand. It looks like the Hebrew letter Shin, like a fancy looking W. It's like God says, after I created man, I stamped him with my name because man was created in my own image. You know, in the first century AD, 2,000 years ago, in Yeshua's day, Yeshua being Jesus' first century Jewish birth name. He wasn't known as Jesus 2,000 years ago. We, we anglicize that today, of course, but 2,000 years ago, they called him Yeshua. It was a very common name in first century Israel 2,000 years ago. And so Yeshua, which simply means salvation, because he is salvation, the only way to salvation. 2,000 years ago in Yeshua's day, a person who was not a Kohen Hagadol, or a descendant of the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest. He could not pronounce the priestly blessing. By doing so, he was transgressing the Torah. This was the case with Israel's first king, King Saul, who was a Benjamite, who offered a sacrifice unauthorized, without the presence of a Kohen Hagadol, a high priest. We know the story in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. And this led to Saul's removal as Israel's first king, and later on down the road in 1 Samuel 31, his demise. Now, today, in the Jewish synagogues, Jews today, with the name Levi, Levit or Kohen are believed to be direct descendants of Aaron and they would be called upon in the synagogue to offer the priestly benediction and then they would get up there with their arms way up, way up in the air with their fingers being formed like this. This prayer among the Jews have been prayed for over 3,500 years. Now, do you remember, for all you Trekkie fans, I'm a Trekkie fan, Star Trek. The character on Star Trek, Mr. Spock, when he used the phrase, live long and prosper, how did he do that? How did he express that phrase? How did he display that phrase? He would do this. Live long and prosper. 
Where did he get that from? Ladies and gentlemen, the priestly blessing. The ironic benediction of number 6, 24 through 26. Leonard Nimoy, as an Orthodox Jew, was very familiar with the ironic blessing. Now, we see an indirect reference to the ironic priestly blessing in Luke chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. Jesus and his Talmudim, that's Hebrew for disciples, they're on Har Hartzait, the Mount of Olives. They're on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. Jesus is about to ascend back to the Father into heaven. But before he does so, we read in Luke 24, 50 through 53. And he led them out as far as Bethany. Now, Bethany is on the opposite side of the Mount of Olives, on the west of the Mount of Olives. I got to visit Bethany for the very first time, myself and Dr. Todd Baker. We've never been to Bethany. All of our trips to Israel, all these years, never been to Bethany. We hear, oh, it's very dangerous, a lot of Arabs in there, no Jews, I don't think you should go there. We went there without any issues, without any problems whatsoever. And we went there and we visited the tomb of Lazarus. And you can see on my Facebook profile page, you know, me standing uh, in front of the tomb of Lazarus um, in Bethany. So Bethany is the opposite side of the Mount of Olives. Now it says, and Jesus, and he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Notice what it said there? He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They worshipped Jesus. That's a clear reference to his deity, that he's God. They worshipped him. Mind you, Judaism is a monotheistic religion. It's the worship of God and God alone. And that monotheism comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 4. In Hebrew, Shema Israel Adonai Elohenu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 53 says, and we're continually in the Beit Hamikdash, the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So I believe we have an indirect reference to the Aaronic priestly benediction prayer right there in Luke 24, 50 through 53. That's what the high priest did, the Kohen Hakadol. He would lift up his arms. And he would form the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet, as we see portrayed right here. Now, again, notice it says he lifted up his hands and blessed them. I simply just have no doubt. He prayed the priestly benediction of Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Jesus, Yeshua. He stole that priestly blessing upon his Talmudim, upon his Jewish disciples. Well, how could he do that? Well, Jesus could do that. Why? Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, this is according to Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 13 through 17. And I invite you 
to take your Bibles and go there. To the book of Hebrews, chapter number 7. Hebrews 7, and those will be in verse number 14. And it says this. For it is evident that how sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses said nothing concerning priesthood. Obviously, Yeshua, Jesus, came from the tribe of Judah. That's where we get the word Jew from, a Jew. As someone who lived in Judea. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. Royalty would come from the tribe of Judah. The Messiah, Mashiach, would come from the tribe of Judah. This tribe of Judah would have no connection to the Aaronic priesthood whatsoever. The writer of Hebrews makes that clear. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Why? Let's read on. And it is yet far more evident. For after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is similar to Melchizedek himself. Verse 16, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, the Torah, or the Ten Commandments. He says, not after the carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. This priest would come after Melchizedek, would be divine. He would be holy. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to adhere. To a karma commandment as the uh, sinful high priest one, as a human high priest one, he would be a divine high priest. Verse 17. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We also uh, see this in uh, Hebrews chapter 6. And uh, verse number 10, we also see in Hebrews 7, 17. We see in verse 21, for those priests were made without an oath, but this, with an oath by him, that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, Jesus was of the tribe of Judah, as I already said. Royalty would come from the tribe of Judah. That's Genesis 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a law giver, the Torah giver, from between his feet until Shiloh comes. See, everybody here in the West says Shiloh. In Israel, they will correct you and say, no. It's Shiloh. And the rabbis tell us that Shiloh is another name for the Messiah. The Messiah would be royalty. He would hold the scepter. He's a king, Melech in Hebrew. And he would come from the tribe of Judah. Hebrews 7, 14 says, Our Lord sprang from the tribe of Judah. That has no connection to the Aaronic priesthood. Of which of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. But yet you would have somebody after the order of Melchizedek coming from the tribe of Judah. And yet we see in Revelation 5.5 5, that Yeshua is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Through Judah would be an earthly Jewish tribe. Jesus would come from that tribe, Judah. Unlike Aaron and the Levites, who are sinful men, Jesus is without sin. Jesus is eternal. He always existed. He is an eternal high priest. He's after the order of Melchizedek. Well, like Melchizedek, 
He just mysteriously comes on the scene and then whoop, mysteriously disappears. We don't know much about Melchizedek. We know he was the priest of Salem. Salem is another word for Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, when you spell Jerusalem, J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Melchizedek was the priest of Salem at that time. He has no beginning. He has no genealogy. He has no ancestors. He comes on the scene, takes tithes of Abraham, a tenth of all, and then disappears. So we don't really know a whole lot about Melchizedek. He just appears on the scene, receives the tithes of Abraham, and then he disappears. Some say he was a theophany, a physical manifestation of God on earth. Some would even say a Christophany, a physical manifestation, a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus on earth. In any case, Melchizedek comes from two Hebrew words. Melech, king, tzedek, righteousness. When you combine those two Hebrew words, Melchizedek or Melchizedek, what do you have? King of righteousness. That's who he was. Melchizedek was the king of righteousness. Jesus, Yeshua, is an eternal Kohen Ha Gadol. He is an eternal, eternal high priest forever. Olam. In Hebrew, he is an eternal high priest. After the order of Melchizedek, Jesus is an eternal high priest. He is without sin. Jesus is our Olam Melech Tzedek. He is our eternal high priest. Jesus is our king of righteousness. You know something? At the end, of the seven-year period of tribulation. Jesus, along with his followers, mount up on white horses. We come back out of heaven to planet Earth riding on white horses. Revelation 9, 19, 11 tells us when he returns, he will return in setting righteousness. Revelation 19, 11. I saw heaven open and hold a white horse and he was sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness. Said it. He will judge and make war. And then in Revelation 19, 16, uh, 19, 16 it tells us and upon his vesture. Well, what is his vesture? Well, the vesture would be the prayer shawl, the talit. Now, Jews have been wearing the prayer shawl or the talit for 3,500 years. Jesus, as a Jew, wore a prayer shawl. This isn't tradition. This isn't man-made. Ladies and gentlemen, this comes from Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 20, where God commanded the Jews to wear Fringes, see, fringes, known in Hebrew as zit zit, t z i z t, zit zit. And uh, of course, before Jews donned one of these things, they would say a prayer, the prayer that you see here in Hebrew. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedushah B'Mitzvotah Mitzvah Lashir Zit Zit. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to wear zit zit or to wear fringes. In other words, it reminds the Jews, do not sin. I got it pop over here on the thing. Do not sin against the Torah. Do not sin against the law of God. Where it says that the woman grabbed the hem of his garment. Ladies and gentlemen, the hem of his garment would have been where the zitzit, the fringes were. 
Jesus as a Jew, as a rabbi. As a matter of fact, I have a book here. You can order it on Amazon or whatever called The Hem of His Garment, talking about the prophecy of the Tali, the prophecy of the prayer shawl. And when it tells us, and I'm going to don the, uh, the Tali, I will don the prayer shawl here, and where it says, upon his vesture and upon his thigh was a name written, Melech HaMelachim, King of Kings. Adonai Shal Adoni, Lord of Lords. He comes back on a white horse wearing the tali, the prayer shawl. He comes back in Tzedek, righteousness, Revelation 19, 11. And then he comes back as king, Melech, Melech Tzedek. He's coming back. You see the connection? He's coming back as king of righteousness. Why? Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. Psalm 110, verse 4, and what we read in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 14 through 17. You know, according to the Times of Israel uh, news website, just recently, thousands and thousands of Jews, rabbis, Jews, flocked to the Kotel. Kotel is Hebrew for the Western Wall, or what Christians call the Wailing Wall. They went to the Western Wall to Jerusalem for the priestly blessing, for the holy day of Sukkot. That's Hebrew, Sukkot, S-U-K-K-O-T, or Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. The ceremony sees male descendants of the Kohanic priestly case gathering at the Western Wall to recite the benediction of number 6, 24 through 26. It is performed daily by devout Jews in synagogues throughout Israel. Those Jews who believe they are descendants of Aaron. The blessings at the Western Wall take place in the spring at Pesach, which is Passover, and Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. The Western Wall is the closest spot on the Temple Mount where the most holy place, or commonly called Holy of Holies, I like using the most holy place instead. The Western Wall is the closest spot to the Temple Mount where Jews can legally pray. Though they are not allowed to visit the Temple Mount to pray there. They can visit there, but they can't pray there. Because the Arabs take a fit. And that's where the ancient Jewish temples once stood. Solomon's Temple and Herod's Temple. The Kotel was closest to the most holy place when the first and second Jewish temples were standing. You can hear thousands of Jews praying the priestly benediction out of number six. At the Wailer Wall, clothed in talits and prayer shawls. And the prayers can be heard as far as the Jaffa Gate as you're ready to enter in, into the Western Wall courtyard. Folks, Jesus is our Olam Kohen HaGadol. He is our eternal high priest, our heavenly, divine, sinless, eternal high priest, who offers intercession for you and I every single day. He is seated at the right hand of the Father on high, a priest forever after the, after the order of Melchizedek. And one day, he will step out of eternity with a great shout 
with the blowing of the shofar. That's a biblical trumpet, a shofar. That's a ram's horn. How do I know that? Read Joshua chapter 6, verses 4, 5, 6, 8, and 13. The priest blew the trumpet of ram's horn. A ram's horn. That's a shofar. It'll be a shofar blast. Jesus will call his bride out of the world. We call this the rapture of the church. That could happen at any moment, at any time. And all I can say to that in closing is Maranatha. Even so come, Lord Jesus. May I impart to all of you that are watching live right now, may I impart to all of you the priestly benediction can I pray this priestly prayer over all of you today that the Lord would also bless you and be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his confidence upon thee and give all of you that are watching today shalom. To give all of you peace. May you go in peace today. Well, as I bring this to a close, I hope that this was a blessing uh, to you. If you're tuning in late, you know, once I upload this, you can watch it again. Take down notes. Write down, get a pen and paper, take down notes. Study this on your own. What a blessing it is to study the Jewish roots of our faith and to have a better understanding of where our faith came from. It came from the Jews. Christianity came out of Judaism and not the other way around. And the church does not replace Israel. We do not believe in supersessionism. We don't believe in replacement theology. That's nothing more than an anti-Semitic doctrine. And many Christians, unfortunately, have embraced it. So don't forget to visit my website, Today in Bible Prophecy. Or sign up for our newsletters while you're there. Navigate around the website. If you want more information about our Bible prophecy tour to Israel in March of 2018, get a hold of me as soon as possible. I want to take between 15 and 20 people to Israel with us. Lord willing, next year. And folks, go to Israel. See these places. See these things for yourself. It's Israel, and then we'll spend one day in Petra in southern Jordan. Two countries for the very low price of one. Our people this year paid about um, $34.50 per person. All inclusive, double occupancy. We threw everything but the kitchen sink in there. You got to go. If you want more information, please contact me as soon as possible. Do that through Facebook Messenger. Send me an email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com or my website, Today in BibleProphecy.org. Patty and I are leaving for Israel on October the 22nd. And we're going there to evangelize. We're going there to go soul. We're going to be passing out Bibles, sharing the gospel, the Messianic prophecies to Jews in the north in the Galilee and in the south in Jerusalem. And I will also be teaching Bible prophecy on location. So we need your help, folks with car rental expense and with gas expense out there. Everything else is paid for. I'm not asking for airfare. I'm not asking for hotel or food. That's all covered. We just need uh, expense for car rental and for gas. Gas is pricey in Israel. If you can please help us out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. Use the PayPal button at the bottom of my webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org. And whatever gift you give, whether big or small, doesn't matter. It will be a blessing. You are having a hand with us over there in Israel in sharing the gospel with the Jewish people. Please pray about supporting us there for the Israel Missions Outreach, or if you just would like to support our ministry, 
<clears throat> others do that at twenty dollars a month you can do that as well you can also mail your support to today in bible prophecy ministries 55 pleasant street apartment 2 lincoln rhode island 02865 if you're a pastor and if you'd like to have me come to your church to preach on israel bible prophecy and current events just get a hold of me i would love to come and be a blessing to your people you're going to get a bible prophecy teacher that will teach you Bible prophecy responsibly <clears throat> and through the Word of God and the Word of God alone. No hype, no drama, no sensationalism, as you get with those other guys out there on YouTube. I'll teach you prophecy responsibly. And so follow me on the social networks. Of course, my Facebook profile page is um, my Facebook profile page is public. Anybody can watch these videos. Invite a friend to tune in every day, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can look at all my late-breaking news stories on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. And if you get into LinkedIn, Evangelist August Rosado on LinkedIn. We'll be on tomorrow morning, Lord willing, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu, Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we will talk to you, Lord willing. Oh, by the way, I, I promised that I would say hello uh, to everybody watching. I almost forgot that. So let's just see who we have here um, in the room with us today. We have, uh, of course, Robin Fraser, a member of our home church, Greater Wood Island Baptist Temple. Good to see her. William Maness is also watching. William, good to see you, buddy. Of course, Janice Waterberger from the left coast. Pray for them in California. They're suffering massive wildfires out there. Janice says lives have already been lost. Um, Matthew Quinlan, good morning to you, buddy. I should say good afternoon now. Good to see you. Matt, we had a nice uh, talk yesterday. I just preached for Matt at his church at Holland Baptist Church in Holland, Maine. And I'm going to be getting a hold of Holland because he is a professional video producer and he would like to work with our ministry and help him to produce quality videos and dvd and dvds and so on and so forth and maybe even possible for a tv program down the road so matt good to see you here brother we'll be in touch man sarah elizabeth quinlan that would be his wife i believe is uh watching good to see her uh christy miles great to see christy miles with us hope all is well with you and your family Mark McRaney out of Mississippi is there with us. We're going to be in Mississippi in November, Mark. Uh, more word coming on that. We just got invited to preach at a few churches out there. Robbie Costa is uh, watching. Great to see Brother Robbie with us. Good morning to you, buddy. It's not Augusto. It's August. <laughs> okay? Not Augusto. It's August. Um, Jenga Reddy uh, Kari is uh, with us. Good to see him. Kathy R. Hundley. Good to see Kathy with us. Mark Guy, good morning to you, buddy. Uh, pastor Jeff Ansbach, and uh, he is now the pastor of Heritage Baptist Church in, uh, is it Woodbridge, uh, Virginia? I, I believe it is. I'm not sure. I believe it's either Woodville or Woodbridge, uh, Virginia. Great to have Pastor Ansbach with us. Michael Valdez is with us. Great to see uh, Michael. Jason Ibsen out of Louisiana, but he's gonna, I believe they're now going to be missionaries to Australia. So great to see Jason Ibsen uh, with us. Stacy Cole is here. Daryl Wagner. Dave Florio. Great to see Dave Florio with us. And uh, Shelly Booten, good friends of ours out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. That's where I was born. Great to see Shelly. Larry Eaton. Oh, you dirty dog, Larry. Oh, you trying to stab your thing with the New York Yankees? Yeah, they may have won last night. I don't expect them to go through Cleveland. They're at Cleveland. They are dominant at home. So ride it while you can, buddy. The Yankees ain't getting past them in Cleveland. <laughs> but I love you, brother. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, Charlotte Young is uh, with us. Great to see Charlotte. Uh, Kapil Lauro. Is also with us. Brian Lawson, good to see him. Christopher Johnson is with us. Sandra Brito is here. She's the mother in law of my daughter, Rebecca Brito. Great to see her. Jim Barrett is with us. James Maynard, 
Good to see James Mader, Babu Rao is with us. Dennis Higgins Sr. is also here. Michael McDonald is here as well. Albert Fortin, good to see you, Albert. May Jones Martinez is with us. Rose Argentina Porras is with us. And I think that is it. Guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. We love you all. May the blessings and the grace and the shalom, the peace of God, be with all of you. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.